You know, if the rope access realm, they have different names. Rope rescue, we call it something else. It's all the same. So we'll start with the true rope offset or cross haul. We're moving something horizontally in addition to up and down. So um, this is good for like big wide spans. We need two points on opposite sides that are high. So just to kind of simulate it, it's hard to get that geometry, the landscape geometry in our response area. So if we have a high point here. This could be an artificial high directional. We have two ropes. For these kinds of offsets, the, the two rope offset and the deflection offset or cross haul, dynamic directional, whatever you want to call it, it's probably a lot easier just to go with single main, single belay instead of a two tension rope system for each side. It's going to be a lot easier to manage. And we need a high point on the other side mirroring it. So with cross haul, it's basically two rope systems. So two rope offset, but really they're four ropes because whenever we're moving anything horizontally away from the face of a wall, there's two aspects of the belay that we have to account for. One is the plummet fall. If one side of our system or another fails, it doesn't account for the swing fall. So that's why each side has their own main and a belay. And, I, and really it's four ropes total, but a two rope offset or cross haul. We want to be careful that we don't turn our offset or two rope offset into a high line and this imaginary point where we're in high line territory is this internal angle here at 120 that's the tipping point so if this thing gets flattened out beyond there we're increasing our forces exponentially and we should be rigging with a certain Kootenai high line principles we want to keep this angle to 120 or less that's going to affect kind of our landscape if our high points aren't high enough but they're really wide and far apart this isn't going to work. It's going to be like a high line that we're trying to create. So our high points have to be very high in relation to the, the total width of the span. And that allows us to kind of uh, work on both sides of the team to, to keep this internal angle at 120 or less. So one side is letting out while the other side is taking in. And the geometry, like if we can try to target and maintain 90 degrees here, as we go from low on one side and we bring and we lift up and we bring it out to the other side, this is a viable option. The less connections between the bridle to the rope systems, that's more ideal. So I'm gonna de-rig this and then re-rig it for uh, another variation that you can see it. We have our two long tails, the yellow and the orange. These are backup connection points, belay points for a rescuer or an additional attachment point for something else that we might need it for. Maybe the patient, maybe I'd say no on the patient, but if we wanted to hook one of these up directly to the litter rail, that's perfectly fine. The other short tail of our double long tail bone on each side is, is now joined. This is just excess tail, but now we have it joined and we have double long tail bone line, double long tail bone line into a tri-link, into the swivel, tri-link, into our bridle. The whole, the total space that we save isn't that much different. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to rotate or independently move the litter package on the swivel to negotiate any kind of obstacles. Let's do the third way and the best way for low profile, minimal gear, and the one I prefer. Double long tails, pretty standard. And now let's look at our bridle and our profile. So we have interlocking double long tail bow lines with a bridle to the yoke like that's very low profile, much better than the other two options. So it takes a little more rope work. You can get sidetracked with the amount of cords, but give it a little bit of practice, it gets easier with all things. So uh, this is my preferred way to tie in a two rope offset system or a cross haul if you're a rope access guy, cross haul for a litter package. And we don't even have to do a litter package here. We could have just tied this interlocking in space and I could just use an Aztec or a set of fours for my personal connection, flip in here. And if I'm not doing litter work and it's just people work, that works too. Okay, so unlike a two rope offset or a cross haul for the rope access types, 
we're going to do something we call a deflection offset, also known as a dynamic directional. So dynamic directional is what rope access guys probably call this. Deflection is what the rope rescue guys call this. It's an offset system. Again, we're moving something horizontally as well as vertically. And so we need to belay for the plummet fall as well as the swing fall on both sides of our system. So here we've just tied our standard double long tail bowline into a litter bridle. This is pretty basic. And and whatever side this is coming from over there, this is like our main our main system, our main working line. So this isn't really like the offset side or the, the directional side. So the term dynamic directional, just think of it as an anchor, a directional anchor, right? You ride a rope through a pulley or on a tree, it's a directional anchor. A dynamic directional is say, okay, well, what if we hook in like a set of fours or some mechanical advantage system between the tree and that pulley, that's the directional. And now we can adjust where that directional lies. And so this is no different. We're just doing this in mid space. So we have our main system over here, our offset system, our deflection side, also needs to come from a high point, just like in a, in a cross hauler or two rope offset, like the, the geometry of the landscape needs to be able to support this. Again, we don't want to turn this into a high line. So we want a 120 degree cantonary angle between the two systems, the, the main side and the, the offset or the deflection side. We want that cantonary angle to be at 120 or less. We want to maintain that because uh, we can go above that inadvertently without realizing it and then we're kind of exponentially increasing our forces and we're we're treading in, in highline territory. True rope system over there, also the deflection side or the offset side needs to be on a true rope system in case one of these fails we don't create a pendulum or swing fall into the face on the opposite side. The easiest way I think personally is to just do another a double short tail bow line, not a double long tail bow line. I don't need long tails. And then figure out how to connect in from there. And so we aren't connecting this into the, the yoke of our bridle. That would be a two rope offset or a cross all. This is a deflection or dynamic directional. And now we can uh, pull in on this side and then we can pretty much move this package left, right, and then it can hover and then we can hold our anchor in place and then they can drop or lower or raise the package at a precise specific point. This is good for terrain or uh, anywhere there might be obstacles or we're trying to shoot a gap down like a shaft or a hole. So we need a very specific point in space. If the height of the exit point of our main system and our uh, deflection, if they, are, if they bone are, both are not high enough in relation to where we need to pitch this to, to make those maneuvers, it's gonna create a greater than 120 degree cantonary angle and that's when we're in highline territory and in and, and those cases that's where a size up is key a proper size up because that's going to dictate our mode of operation if it's too shallow or the span is too far apart and that angle is really is going to be tight we can do a reeving highline we can also do a reeving highline here but it's overkill if, if the geometry of the landscape supports it we don't need to do any elaborate rigging our principles and rigging are just pretty standard so we can get away with uh, deflection offset or dynamic direction. Now, should something happen to this component or this component, the double sheet pulley or the carabiner, granted, like we don't have a belay for this. So you could say that these are critical points on, on this side of the system. So that's where our short tails come into play and we can just clip around the pair of our main, our main working line side. Now, do we clip on top or do we clip on bottom? And I don't think there's a right or wrong on this because it depends on what book you subscribe to pros and cons I either way is fine I have two short tails I can go one on top one on bottom and that's fine we don't necessarily have to use a double sheet pulley here we can also use a kootenai pulley just as well so let's substitute it out with a kootenai pulley and some people prefer the kootenai like a large knot passing pulley if it's a windy day or if these lines have inherent twists and everything wants to twist up on you it might be a problem for this to to go back and forth either twists above the pulley right there i mean they'll, they'll always untwist themselves but um, it's just inconvenient and frustrating or if they twist it below and you wanted to raise this could cause friction and, and jam up a little bit uh, and then the litter could start to spin so some people like to use the kootenai pulley if it's uh, available as an alternative and so now we just encapsulate all this and now it doesn't matter 
how twisted up these things get, it's still gonna pass through the big knot passing pulley. So here, just looking at it, I'd say that it's probably better not to have a belay hooked in on top because it could get sucked down like that. So maybe we just, and we don't even need both of these short tails. I can just use one and that's probably acceptable. So right there, that also works. Some people will like to change what this looks like. They may opt for uh, something to the effect of like an inherent two to one system. And I suspect that they get comfortable seeing this in maybe training evolutions and they think, oh, well, we always do a two to one. And so if, it's, if it doesn't look like this and it's not a deflection offset or a dynamic direction, it's still a dynamic directional. It's just a little bit more difficult to rig because you have to terminate one of these lines, send it through a bite here, and then attach a belay here and then jump it to there. This is just a little more complicated. I think just doing a terminal double short tail bowline and then hooking in without a two to is a better option. So you can kind of see what that would look like. So this would be our, our deflection line and the blue would be belay, but we'd have to undo this, like tie it in to here and then jump it to where it is here. A couple different ways to do dynamic directionals or deflection offsets. Okay, maybe just to elaborate or you know, drive the point home on some of the offsets. Um, so here, this is a deflection or dynamic directional. We have two high points. They don't have to be the same height, but they're across a span. So it's not this wide chasm. It's not gonna work very well because we wanna keep this internal cantonary angle right here between the main line system and the offset system at 120 degrees or less. This works uh, if there's some additional obstructions. So like if this is a deep shaft, like we need to deflect, hold our position and then lower down. You can't do this uh, with a, a two rope offset or a cross haul. The geometry is not gonna support that because like things are gonna get bumped up. You can't get down in there. This will work with a reading high line. Uh, it'll be a, a sloping but reading high line, but that's overkill, it's unnecessary. You don't need to do that. If, if the geometry will support it, uh, basic rigging principles stick with a deflection offset, AKA dynamic directional, but a reading high line will also work. This is our alternative, the overkill version, where we can do a reading high line where we have to rig according to Kudney principles, but our track line here can exceed 120 and then we send our system out and then we lower down similar to what we did uh, with a deflection offset. So this is like English or Norwegian uh, Highline Reeve. Overkill, don't need it in, in this kind of geometry. Where you would need this Reeving Highline where the deflection offset doesn't work is this kind of profile where it's flatter, the span is flatter, it's not deep but there is a deep shaft that you have to get through or some sort of constriction there's no way that a dynamic directional or deflection offset is going to work here. Like you can't, you got to exceed that 120 and you have to rig differently with the Kootenai principles. So this is kind of your only option in that, in that case. You got to go with a, a reading high line. A cross haul or two rope offset also won't work. You, you just can't get these ropes down in there like that. So for like a, a two rope offset or a cross haul, you need a, a big clear like pet or span, but the span still needs to be in relation to, to the height of where you're gonna operate your two sides. It needs to be deeper. So kind of more like trench-like as opposed to like pit-like. So then you can maintain a good angle and this internal cantonary can stay at 120 or less and you can work together on both sides to move this anywhere from here, down, across, over, and up. But if you both were hauling at the same time, you do have the potential to, on a two rope system or a cross haul, to get greater than a 120 degree angle. So you gotta be careful uh, with what you're doing operationally. Same thing with the deflection offset, dynamic directional. You can't exceed those internal cantonary angles. So you just have to be careful because when you do that, your forces change. You have to understand the forces in your system. On that note with geometry of the landscape, let's talk about our other offsets and specifically 
tracking line offsets and people are very confused all the time every day like i hear why do they call it a track line and tracking line it's confusing well track lines are for high lines tracking lines are offsets tracking line offsets we want to maintain 120 or less yes with a tracking line offset if we aren't careful we can flatten this out and then we would inadvertently without knowing it turn it into a high line system but we aren't rigging in accordance with those kind of high line rigging principles so it's kind of dangerous we need to be cognizant of what we're doing. Also with a tracking line offset, again, we're moving uh, vertically and horizontally. So we have to account for a belay system that will account for a plummet fall and a belay system that will account for a swing fall. And so with a tracking line offset, if it's just a single tracking line, we need to make sure that we keep the load within three feet or one meter of the face at all times. Because if we start to exceed that, even if we're at an angle of 120 or less, if our tracking line were to fail for some reason, we will do that slam factor, the, the swing fall. So if you know you're going to be operating uh, away from the face or the ground surface by uh, over three feet, maybe you should consider doing a dual tracking line. So it's going to be a total of four ropes. So main and belay or two tension rope system for your main working line, plus a tracking line, plus a second tracking line for that redundancy. To, so if one tracking line fails, the other tracking line holds. So that would account for the swing fall. The geometry here will support a tracking line offset because if you operate far enough away and also you can elevate where you are here quite easily, you can maintain a 120 or less as you fly like nap of the earth on your tracking line offset. Uh, off the side of the road, probably not gonna have that luxury. It's gonna be more like straight, steep angle, high line kind of terrain because your anchor is like really close to the slope and you want to hover this package off the brush, which I did in another video. And this internal cantonier angle was really flat, but we aren't really concerned with the failure here because it's going to be really difficult for this to get above or more than three feet off the deck, off the surface. So if the failure of the track line occurs, like it, it's not super critical, but we still want a manual belay or two tension rope system for the working line system, pulling this thing back up a steep slope. High line here, a tracking line offset won't work because you're just not gonna get that angle any lower than 120. It's just not gonna happen on a steep slope embankment off the side of a road or something. Final example, because there are obstacles here, a tracking line offset is not gonna work because you're gonna have to raise this up to clear obstacles. And in doing so, you flatten the cantonier angle out and you, at, at certain points along the way, you exceed three feet off the deck. So something that looks like this, it's got to be some sort of a high line system. The tracking line offset won't work. Hopefully that demodies the water when people talk about track lines versus tracking lines versus high lines versus offsets. The nomenclature of a, a two rope offset is the same thing as a cross haul. The nomenclature of a deflection offset is the same thing as a dynamic directional. There you go. See ya. <laughs>